Good evening everyone, I'm doing a little video tonight for you about the full moon in Pisces that we are currently in. If you're in the UK, um, it's going to be around just after, well just before 1am, that it's going to be at its peak. Um, obviously if you're in like America, then it would have fall this afternoon, so slightly different timings if you see that online. Some of it say the 20th, some of it say the 21st. Now, this time of year um, is a really powerful time of year that we are in. Um, we also have what's known in the astro terms as a grand trine. So it's a massive triangle and it's made by two planets and a point. So Mars, Pluto and the North Node. Um, and that is a really good thing because a grand trine means that the energy flows easily. Now, under the full moon, it can be interpreted as the drive to release resistance, which allows us to get back on our soul path. So I hope you're all ready to do your releasing um, because it will be really powerful for you and it will help you forward on your journey. Now, every full moon offers us a chance to release and let go. This one will make releasing for our highest good easier and better. So if you're aware of how the energy falls, like today, tomorrow, and you know that energetically this is the perfect time to focus on the releasing. Um, also know that this full moon does trigger Neptune and the modern Pisces planet. This essentially means that there's more Piscean Neptune energy around than your average full moon in Pisces. So this energy is mysterious and spiritual. So tap into that on the night of the full moon. So like tonight, like someone like me will be doing. Um, I have my own little ways um, that I do stuff and I work with the energy. But I'm going to run through some more general ones. Um, and anyone that is interested or feels drawn to do that, then maybe some of these like points that I've written out might be helpful for you. Um now, Pisces is also the last sign of the zodiac, so this last full moon marks the end of a period in our lives. Um, have a little think about what you've released over the past 12 months and how your connection to the divine has changed. Um, now, soon after this full moon, we do get the Mercury-Pluto crash, and basically this full moon may seem to be winding you up. Then we are jumping, like, literally into um the mercury retrograde so there, there's a lot going on with the planets now on a full moon we know when the moon gets bigger in the sky it enlarges so does our emotions so does our feelings so does everything that kind of goes on you know like even if it's something little you know we're going to feel it more it's going to feel more emotional more tender because that is what happens at a full moon I just find like when you have a little bit more of an intuitive perspective of how the energy works um, and the moon cycles, you can actually kind of like navigate your way through um, those particular points in the month better. And also when you start working with them, you'll find like you can achieve a lot as well. You know, whether that be on your healing journey, your soul path, um, things you want to bring into your life, things you want to let go of. Now on a full moon, obviously it is a time to reflect. I always say, ref even if you start small, reflect on since the last full moon that we had. Um, look back then if you did do release and work, like what have has that come through? Has that been easy for you? And then have a look at what else you need to focus on releasing. Um, you can visualize that. You could you can have a sit down and think about you know writing a forgiveness list. Um, releasing people or situations that you know are no longer benefiting your highest good. Um, it's also really important to be grounding yourself and cleansing your energy down because you've got this, especially if you're sensitive to energy, we've got way more of this strong energy coming in and sometimes that can throw us around a little bit. So ways that you can ground yourself, I will touch on briefly, um, but I have done some posts about them before. You know, grounding is making sure first and foremost that you're nourishing yourself. So you're eating well, you're hydrated you're going out in nature, you know, you can do grounding visualizations, standing on the earth, standing on the ground. If you live in a flat like me, don't worry. Sometimes I will go outside, but you, you can do like visualization techniques as well if you can't access like the outside. 
um i also got not too long ago actually it was really good it's a grounding mat um it was made for me by a healer but um it's like i'm sure it's like copper over the top and you plug it in and it earth so it actually grounds you and even when i put my hands on it you can do it with your hands it doesn't have to be your feet like i can really feel the energy things like tai chi as well i've done a bit of tai chi in the past and that is really good for someone like me that has such high strong energy running through me to really balance my energy um so there's some things some people would do like shower meditations you you know visualize the water cleansing you grounding you or having a bath um but generally like being out in nature is really really good um even just stomping on the ground and letting off any negativity anything that doesn't belong to you um cleansing your energy again there's many different ways you can do it um I have, <laughs> I just have to laugh because I have my own little ways. Like I say, I do things for me. But again, like you have to kind of seek out what works for you and what you feel drawn to do. There's so many different techniques from like visualizing like lights around you, white lights, mirrors around you. Like there's so many different techniques, sweeping techniques. Literally, I'll, sometimes I'll picture like feathers clearing my energy down hoover not literally but i'll vision it like a hoover clearing out my energy field that anything that doesn't belong i zip myself up in my energy field um loads of different ways that you can cleanse your energy and also protect your energy which i feel is important but obviously that's because i do more spiritual practices um and connection work and stuff so and when you are how can I put it when you are quite gifted or well actually it doesn't even have to be that I'm going to rephrase that because even if people have gifts and work with their gifts and use their gifts yes of course protecting yourself is essential but even if you're not and you're just someone that's intuitive or even if you you're not you don't really understand the energy stuff much at all but it's still important to protect your energy because even if you're around like your friends your family or you're out and about you know what i mean we're all susceptible to other people's energy or other people taking from our energy so it is important to look at ways to do that but yeah cleansing your energy some people like to use sage um or like i say some people you can literally use a feather to cleanse your energy it's kind of whatever works for you but again i have put some posts on my page before about that but if anyone does want more information um because obviously this is just a general video about the full moon not specifically on energy cleansing then um just drop me a message and i can help you with that a little bit more now um when we were speaking about releasing i would all say it's helpful to write a list um, or journal what you would like to release it could be like we mentioned before toxic people situations old habits or insecurities you know that kind of thing anything you feel that's holding you back from where you want to be um for you to move forward for your highest good now because obviously the full moon's in pisces i would advise as well spending time in water so that could be having like a moon bath um if you can get out in nature near water so like a lake pond a river a pool if you could go swimming something like that as well can be really beneficial the healing energy of the water um if you have crystals or any divination tools that you use um perfect time now is to cleanse them and charge them is under the full moon so i always put mine on the window ledge because i am blessed that where i live is <laughs> the moon chose me because the moon is always spot on exactly where i need it to be always the perfect spot in my window for me to see so i put them on there to cleanse them uh some people might want to put them outside or you know it depends what room you want to put them in um but this is the time to cleanse stuff um you can also make things like moon water if that interests you i've done it before i add my own other little things to it to make you know special magical powerful water that you can use for then different purposes um but even if you simply have like a filtered spring water um or bottled water or glass water in glass bottle and um, put it under the moon you can charge it and set your intentions into it then drink it the next morning or put it in your bath there's loads of different things you can do with that it's also a good time if you're feeling drawn to you could seek out um any intuitive guidance or having a reading or even doing like a reading for yourself um and just focusing in on your energy and see what's coming up for you that can be quite beneficial for people um cleansing your space 
is always a good thing just cleanse release and stuff you don't need so have a good clean tidy up declutter in your home you know giving stuff away to charity or giving it away to people you know if you don't need it anymore because the energy in our homes is also a reflection of our energy so if your home's really cluttered and messy and how would that then affect your mental and physical and spiritual energy of course it's going to affect it too i would also say it's a perfect time to do some meditation um don't be put off because i know when you say the word meditation to some people they're like oh i can't do that or i don't want to do it but it can be done in loads of different forms you haven't obviously you can just sit there and focus on your breathing or some people listen to guided meditations or music to help them meditate um but it can also be just sitting and visualizing your dreams and what do you, where do you want your life to go what kind of life do you want how do you want to live your life um sitting and observing the moon i do that even on the run-up to the full moon every night i'll sit there whether it's 20 minutes two hours i will just sit under the moon and observe and you know what once you quiet your mind you'd be so it's so intriguing to see what actually comes into your mind and the things that we do notice journaling is another great one painting artwork yoga all those kind of things can help you meditate too without you even realizing um so there's some great things for you to try by doing that kind of stuff on the full moon whether it be tonight or tomorrow night whenever you kind of feel most drawn to then that should help you with this energy of the full moon so i hope you get to enjoy it thank you for listening